Hi, Jason Tankle here. I hope you're all doing well. Last week I talked a little bit about the COVID-19 uh, situation that we're going through and what you can do as an artist during this time. It's a pretty scary time for everybody and I know everybody's sick and I know at least I'm thinking what's it going to be like on the other side of this? Are my galleries still going to be open? Are the shows that I wanted to do, are they still going to be operating? Um, I'm trying not to think too much about that though. I'm trying to immerse myself into my work and just taking this time, treating it as, you know, as somewhat of a gift, if you will, where I don't have to worry about those things. I was featured artist in the Southeastern Wildlife Expo this last February. And while it was wonderful, it also came with some pressure, you know, doing, getting enough paintings done. Will the public like these paintings? Will the show, or these are the kind of paintings that the show wants me to bring? And so now I don't have those um, pressures, if you will. So I'm really now just trying to take this time to do the paintings that I've always wanted to do. And I hope that you will take this time also. And who knows, you might end up with your strongest work by doing that. There were a number of artists during the Great Depression that really contributed a lot to our culture and really thrived during that time. So try to be one of those artists. Try to be somebody who really speaks out you know, your emotions and your feelings, and even maybe what's going on during this time. I'm not the type of artist that deals with current events. I'm more historical, but um, that might be something that you will find um, that you could fit into your repertoire, if you will. Uh, if you like what you're seeing here, I encourage you to subscribe. It really helps me to continue making these videos. And also hit the like button below and leave a comment. You know, let me know what you're thinking. Let's have a discussion about you know, what's going on and what we as artists can do to help each other out, to kind of band together during this time and to get through this. And also to make the public realize how important artwork can be, especially during this time. I, I like to think that maybe people being trapped in their homes are going to be looking at their walls and when they come out of their homes they're going to want something to put on that wall. So um, let's keep our spirits up, I know I'm trying to, and let's have a discussion and um, let's get through this together. Okay, I wanted to talk a little bit about the painting that I think I finished. I um, had this one halfway completed last week in the video. If you haven't seen that video, go back and check it out. Just uh, look at the little icon above and you can click there and go see that video. But um, I had it halfway completed like I said and I talked a little bit about what I thought I was going to do. And now, now that it's completed, I'm going to talk about what I did and why I did it. The first thing I wanted to uh, discuss are the bison over here. I had talked about having some bison come in out of the fog. You notice these bison are starting to change direction. The bison over here, they're running basically sideways, if you will. It's a total profile thing. But since this bull is veering off course, which kind of is the whole drama of the painting, they're starting to follow him. He's splitting off course from the rest of them. The warrior is trying to follow, and of course we have them following too. I kept the brush strokes pretty loose in them. There isn't much of any detail at all. They're basically implied mostly by you know, sh uh, light and shadow, by form if you will. And there's a couple reasons why I did that. First of all, if you go too detailed with things that are further back, they're going to distract from your focal point. Um, I wanted the emphasis to be on him, the main bison, and on the warrior. And if I went in with all this detail, they're going to compete with him. The other thing is that leaving detail out is going to give the illusion of depth and also motion. If I have a bunch of detail in there, it, it, it just it, it stops the motion, if you will. And a really great artist to study for an example of this is Manfred Schatz. He was a German artist. He did um, wildlife paintings and in a very loose manner, but he really captured motion like no other artist that I've seen. So check out Manfred Schatz. That's S-C-H-A-T-Z. Uh, he's one of my favorite wildlife artists. Uh, going over here to the sky and to the hills, when I started to paint the sky, uh, the hills in um, a little more, I originally just had them blocked in with loose paint, but I wanted to go in with some uh, uh, more solid paint, if you will. 
I went a little too blue with both the sky and the mountains and um, it just totally destroyed it. It just it stuck out way too much. It didn't fit in with the really strong ochre harmony that you have going on here. I, and it killed the atmosphere. So I went back in and I basically took you know some of the uh, color from I guess here kind of a um, I would say a, a cat lemon, titanium white, a little bit of yellow ochre and uh, mixed that back in with the paint I had up there. That paint was wet so I could just kind of blend it in and it did this, it killed the clean color which is exactly what I wanted. This painting is not about really clean color. It's about dust and dirt flying everywhere and motion and clean color is basically out. In fact the cleanest color I probably have is this little bit of green right in here which I think helps kind of draw the eye in but I definitely didn't want it back up there. Um, I wanted that dust that atmosphere and everything and even though the main dust clouds are over here you know that you're still going to have thin layers of dust filtering all throughout the painting. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is this shadow. I kept it um, fairly light. Uh, the, the lighting in here is very subdued. There is some light in there, but it's being blocked out a lot by the dust. So I did want some kind of cast shadow in here, but I didn't want it real strong. If this would have been like complete full sunlight, this shadow would probably have to be a lot darker, but then the shadows on the bison would have to be a lot more defined and sharp and dark too. And that's not the case here. So uh, pretty light shadow there, pretty light in value. With the uh, sagebrush and the grasses, I kept those, uh, tried to keep those fairly loose. Sometimes I think maybe I need to loosen it up even more when I look at it. I'm not sure. It, it always looks a little bit different when you photograph your painting and you look at an image of it versus seeing it in person. But in person, at least, I think that there is somewhat of a loose feel. I didn't want to go crazy tight with the grasses or the sagebrush because, once again, it's going to detract from this. Um, it's also going to somewhat kill the feeling of motion in this whole painting. The, this painting is really about motion and action. So you want to leave the detail out where you don't need it, as I said before with them. If you look at the rider back here, he doesn't have any detail at all. It's basically just a shape and with a little bit of highlights implied there just to give some kind of um, you know sense of form if you will. So I'm not sure if I'm done with this painting or not. Um, I'm gonna put it away for a couple weeks. If um, you know if I have it for a couple more weeks I may take it out make some more tweaks to it but overall I'm pretty happy with where it is. So please subscribe below. Also if you want to see how this painting was done step by step go visit my blog which is mysketchjournal.com I'll have a link below in the description. My latest blog post in there depending on when you're watching this of course um, I show, I took a lot of photos of this at each stage and I describe, you know, the process, some of the colors I use and everything like that. So go check that out. Also, uh, make sure you subscribe, hit that like button if you found this um, video enjoyable and informative, and leave your comments below.